This is Matt once again. We're about to another review. There's another paid request, this time from Matthew. Thank you so much for that. Uh, for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, re-reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, commentaries, whatever, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1978 film Magic, which I've heard of, but I've never seen... First appearance would make you think it's a movie like Child's Play about a killer doll. Not in the slightest. It's much more of a psychological movie. Starring Anthony Hopkins. Yes, Anthony Hopkins. Guy would be Hannibal Lecter in Sounds of the Lambs. Many other actors. Sir Anthony Hopkins. Very early young role. He does a good job as this guy who... Play, he's a magician, he bombs in this little bar, and he's yelling at them. We don't hear it, but we see what's going on, because it's Anthony Hopkins describing what happened, and we see it, but we don't hear it, because we're hearing his voice describing why he did what he did. Yelling at them as he's cracking up, no one's paying attention, you know, I spent all this time on this, but y'all just laughing about it, not even paying attention. So off screen, he hits a bid, and the thing that made it happen was that he does a magic act, but he has his ventriloquist doll, who he calls Fats. And so he'll argue with Fats, the, the doll, and you know, be a little bit blue with the doll, with its humor. Oh, look at the, you know, see the bra with the bid jugs? His manager is played by Burgess Meredith, Mickey from Rocky. Yo, Mickey. Nice to see Burgess Meredith, good actor. Burgess Meredith has his agent saying, hey, you don't get the, the shot to be famous. We've got talk shows, maybe even Johnny Carson, maybe even a pilot for a show. And Anthony Hopkins wants to do it, but he's nervous and decides not to because there is a medical exam that deep down he knows he's not going to be able to pass. But Burgess Meredith doesn't know that yet. He's like, oh, you're just afraid of success. No, I'm not afraid of success. So he runs out. He goes to this lake that... Uh, his high school crush is nearby and that's played by Anne Margaret and then a romance between them starts she has a husband that doesn't really pay attention to her he's off doing something else uh, that guy's actually played by Ed Lauder who I remember as a cop in Death Wish 3 he's been in quite a few other stuff as well I think he's passed away since and of course you get the idea that Anthony Hopkins and the doll, it's pretty much his id. He's uh, psychotic in the fact of he has to be able to use the doll in order to say certain things, do certain things. He's relying on it. And there would be times where he's talking literally to the doll. So he's talking to himself but in, having actual conversations. And his mind is has been fragmented. His mind is trapped. His mind is just not there and that's the the gist of the story now number one is directed by richard attenborough and if that name sounds familiar he directed other stuff but he was also an actor he's the guy who played john hammond in jurassic park welcome to jurassic park and he was in the lost world jurassic park 2 and I mean, I knew him more as an actor because of that, but I know he had directed other films, including this. The music is by Jerry Goldsmith. I'm a big Jerry Goldsmith fan, I would say, of the music composers. He was my number one favorite. What he did on the three first three Rambo films, Star Trek The Motion Picture, Leviathan, Runaway. Like, many times, I'm like, yes, great to hear another Jerry Goldsmith piece of music. I thought he did a very nice job on this one. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite scores, but 
it was nice to hear a new piece of music from him. I thought Jerry Dolsmith had a lot of talent. And he made a score that seemed a bit different compared to his other pieces of music in other films. Anthony Hopkins, I thought he did a nice job acting-wise. Played a guy who's cracked and... Granted, I think at one point uh, there was talks of a comedian like Gene Wilder to be the lead. I think Gene Wilder had said that this was the role he really wanted. And he says that he saw the film, he thought... Maybe it would have been better if it was a comedian in the lead role. And I can see that in the fact of what Anthony Hopkins is doing his act. He's not really funny. And it's hard to gather why he would be so popular. But Hopkins does better when it's the acting. When it's the more dramatic, more serious points for the film. When it's him doing the act, it's like, uh, I don't see why people would love this character that much or would love this act so much. And this is kind of a guy that likes Jeff Dunham for fuck's sake, but I do think a comedian would have been able to approach the act portion, the comedy portion, the ad lib portion, whatever you want to call it, more successful than Anthony Hopkins, who's not known for comedy. He's not known to be that type of person. Brad, this is early in his career, but you know, even throughout the years, you know, Anthony Hopkins, he's known for a lot of stuff, but not for comedy. So I think the act itself suffers because Anthony Hopkins is not that type of guy. But I still understand why he was cast because he definitely, I thought, did a nice job where you know, I felt sorry for the character, but he was still doing wrong things. And, you know, he's just, it's Anthony Hopkins. He's a damn good actor. And Margaret, she was likable. She recognized him, even though he thought he she wouldn't recognize him from school. She did. There's some decent intense moments, like she's really into his magic, going to show her a trick. So then Anthony Hopkins is being very nervous, because the doll's not there, it's just him. So he's being very nervous, and the trick fails. And she's like, oh, it's okay. And then Anthony Hopkins is more pissed. No, 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 no. I can do this. Shut up. Just shuffle the cards. Now, right then, I'm thinking, if you were Anne Margaret, you would have slapped him, says, get the fuck out of here, or kick him in the nuts, or shut the fuck up, or kick him in the nuts again. Um, the, it's kind of weird that she went along with it. Like, this is a guy you haven't seen in years. You've talked to him, like, maybe a day or two, if that. And then he's getting so hyped up and angry because he failed. No, shut up. You just shuffle the you know, shuffle the goddamn cards. Again, I mean, Aunt Margaret, if this is not any warning bells ringing in your head, then her character is a bit of a, a dummy. <laughs> and I guess I'm allergic to that bullshit. So Aunt Margaret, like, her acting was good. Her character seemed a bit daft. I'm like, you've seen how this guy's acting. You don't think there's any warning bells? But then he gets it right the second time. He's like, I didn't fail. I didn't fail. And I think Hopkins does a good job acting-wise. It's a decent little intense sequence. You're just wondering why Anne Margaret's just not kicking him in the nuts and leaving. And so you fuck this and fuck your cars. Shuffle each one up your ass. And shit him out with a deck. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's how it was in the 70s. I don't know. It's not until about halfway through where things take a turn. Because Burgess Meredith gets there and finds out that, you know, Anthony Hopkins is fighting with the doll. And he tries to find, oh, it's just part of an app, part of an app. But Burgess knows it's, it's not. Um, also, Ed Louder, the husband, returns. And things go wrong. And I don't know where to go from there. In terms of spoilers. But yeah, it's one of those films that, like I said, if you, if you watch, if you look at the cover, maybe even the trailer, if you think this is going to be a child's play, 
trilogy of terror with the Taylor doll, if if you think it's going to be that kind of film, you're going to be disappointed in. It's much more of a psychological flick about a guy who... The thing is, though, we kind of start off with him having lost his mind. It's not like this gradual progression of, like, how did he lose his mind so badly? I guess the whole beginning where he loses it on the, the bar because he performed poorly and they didn't pay attention. Maybe that's supposed to be the clincher as to why he cracked. Which, I don't know, didn't seem that. I mean, he bombed in front of a audience. That happens to comedians and all sorts of stand-up all the time. So, it was like, maybe a little bit more as to why he cracked. And maybe a little bit more in-depth or a little bit more of a build-up where we see him. Because it's like from the beginning we see that he's a bit crazed. So where do you go from there? Like maybe if we're able to seem a bit normal. And then these events happen. This happens, this happens, this happens, this event. And then he becomes a bit more crazed. And then he starts. Maybe he's working with the doll. And then he's. Because all this shit's happening to him. Then his sight is getting split between him and the doll. Psychologically wise. Like maybe that would be more of an interesting build up. Instead of. He bombed. Then the whole. Him hitting bid is off camera. Like the stuff that was off camera. Off screen. Seemed like it would be important stuff. To showcase that rise. That transition. And probably wonders if a little bit of that was a mistake. But instead it was like, well, we gotta get to the high school crush and their interactions. Which were some you know, nice interactions between the two, but... I felt like maybe a little bit something was missed, but not having the audience see that. But yeah, Anthony Hopkins... Because it's him controlling the ventriloquist doll. The, his voice is out of the, the doll's mouth as well. Which makes sense. The, the doll itself is a creepy design. I mean I don't get scared and creep up, creeped out by ventriloquist dolls. But the fact it kind of looks like Anthony Hopkins. I thought they did a nice job with that. I, w I mean I read reviews that they were creeped out and scared. I did. I guess if you don't like mannequins or if you don't like ventriloquist dolls. Maybe it would creep you out. No it never creeped me out. It's not a film with like a big body count. It's not a film with gore. I don't know, I could say, this little hints of suspense. But yeah, it was more me appreciating the acting performances, especially Ethy Hopkins, enjoying how he approached this crazed role before different kinds, like, you know, it's a different kind of crazed role. It's different from Hannibal Lecter or some of the other characters he would play later on. This is a guy, again, I felt a bit sympathy for, but said he was doing bad things. In okay case in point, I think one of the better scenes is Burgess Meredith, when he realizes something's going on, and, you know, I gotta go tell some doctors. And the doctor's like, no, you can't do this, this is my one chance. Okay, how about this? That doll? Make... Make him shut up for five minutes. And you get this look at Anthony Hopkins' face. It's like, yeah, I can do that. And then they sit down. And we're literally with them for like two, two and a half minutes. Where Anthony Hopkins is kind of trying to make conversation. And like every 30 seconds, it's like, how much time has it been? Oh, 30 seconds. So he's got four and a half minutes. You know, this is very cruel, you know that? And then Burgess Meredith is like, it's not meant to be. Yeah, I don't know if I've actually forgive you for this. How long has it been? Minute and 20? And then you see the resignation in Anthony Hopkins' face where he goes, I can't make it. 
And Burge is like, yeah, I, Sally, I kind of thought that would happen. It's that resignation where Eddie Hopkins just looked at like, I can't make it. Like, he can't make the five minutes without projecting onto the doll. And I thought Anthony Hopkins and both and Burgess Meredith played that scene fairly well. And it seems like that that made me go, I, I appreciate the film. This is not a film I would get on DVD or Blu-ray, even if it's on Blu-ray, or seek out, watch again. It's one of those films that, you know, wasn't scary, wasn't the most exciting, uh, but decently told by with good actors, a very competent score by Jerry Dolesmith. And good scenes like that, like the, again, the shuffling of the cards, trying to do this trick, failing, trying desperately to succeed again, to make him believe he's not a failure in front of Anne Margaret. Again, this scene here with Burgess Meredith. <clears throat> Those are the scenes that really, I think, make the film, at the very least, a, a decent watch. And I didn't mind the way it ended either. Spoiler, three, two, one, spoilers. And spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. He's killed Burgess Meredith. He's killed Ed Lauder. Burgess Meredith, he bashes with the dummy. And then tries to put him to lake. Burgess Meredith wakes up, drowns Burgess Meredith. Ed Lauder uses the dummy, to, who has a knife. Uses to, to stab Ed Lauder in the stomach a few times. Projecting on the fat screws up the stuff between Anthony uh, Hopkins and Ann Margaret. Fats is like, you gotta kill her. No, I can't. Anthony Hopkins made this little heart thing that he wanted to give her when he was at high school. She accepted it. It cuts to night blood on the knife. But then you come to find out he didn't stab her. He stabbed himself. Because in fact, it's like, why does my stomach hurt? And then Anthony Hopkins reveals that he stabbed himself. Because he didn't want to hurt Anne Margaret. And even Fats is going, well, why didn't you go with her? And he's like, well, she would have just turned me down. And kind of this realization at the end where even the dummy goes, well, us was you. It was you the whole time. And it's almost like this realization of what's been going on with his head. And then the irony is, after he dies, she actually does forgive him. And she's like, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's, you know, give it a shot together. So, the irony of he says she would, she would have turned me down, which that wasn't the case. Would she have been able to fix him? Would she have not? Maybe this is the best way it could have ended. I guess that's up to the viewer. So yeah, I didn't mind the way it ended. I didn't mind the, like I said, the scenes between him and Burgess Meredith. And uh, interactions between him and Anne Margaret. I say, Anthony Hopkins did a nice job portraying his character. I guess his stand-up bat, you don't really buy that people would love this act that much. So I did see Gene Wilder's take on maybe should have been a comedian. I think at one point Steven Spielberg was going to direct this and he was going to get Robert De Niro. Hmm. Robert De Niro, huh? This is a fucking doll. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think Anthony Hopkins did a better job than what Robert De Niro would have done. But yeah, overall, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind the movie for what it was. Did not mind it for what it was. So, I didn't. Just, it's not a killer dummy movie. And I don't think it... There are one or two times where the doll moves by itself without Eddie Hopkins being there. But I think that's meant to... We're kind of in his head where we're seeing it move like he does. Because there's nothing else that makes it seem as if this is a supernatural thing. 
not that at all. Maybe some people will try to go in that direction, but to me, the movie really never went into that. That was all about you know, his, him projecting himself onto this thing. I don't want to say split personality, but you know, get so that type of thing. I know there's a difference between the two, but I'm just saying it's in that ballpark. So with that said, uh, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.